podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. For decades, North Carolina was known as the furniture capital of the world. And while thousands of jobs have been lost in this sector, there's optimism the industry will rebound in our state. Elizabeth Wilder takes us to western North Carolina for a look inside at the evolving furniture market in tonight's North Carolina Rising Report. County, North Carolina, home to scenic mountain views, Whitewater Rapids, and the only Stanley Furniture plant still operating in the country. It's going against the tide of manufacturing in the United States. And my belief is we need more manufacturing in the United States, not less. Unemployment in July of 2011 here was over 14 percent. If you didn't work here, where would you work? Don't worry, I'll smoke around here. We probably have to leave the county. Bill Jefferson started working for Stanley after losing another manufacturing job to someone in Mexico. Well, I was actually devastated. That was, that was one of the hardest things I've had to deal with in my life. And while all of Stanley's other furniture is made abroad, workers here in Robbinsville precisely craft the Young America line, including case goods and cribs that convert to beds. Starting price on those cribs, over $800. It's not going to be the cheapest product, but you know, you're not going to pay uh, a Chevrolet price to buy a BMW either. We go above just being compliant. We want to be the safest product on the marketplace. It's a risk for Stanley executives who are betting moms and dads will pay more for safer products, bucking a trend where a cheaper price often trumps higher quality. Our plan? is to be able to show people they're wrong. There are, there, are, there are certain situations with a niche product that the consumer will buy a product. And, and our sales and marketing plan around safety, around quality, around delivery, around configurability, uh, we just got to match an operational plan to that sales and marketing plan and then we'll, we'll prove them wrong. That's our goal. Sales are aimed at a worldwide market even targeting parents in China. Back at home, the economic future for this rural Carolina community is counting on Stanley's success. Stanley to Graham County means everything. Uh, they will employ any, at any given time between 400 and up to uh, 600 jobs. Uh, it's the mainstay of our community. Uh, without Stanley, uh, it would be very hard for the economy in Graham County to sustain itself. The county, along with help from the Rural Center and the Golden Leaf Foundation, has invested more than a million dollars to modernize and retool the aging plant. Some of these machines that they're bringing in are going to be able to do like what uh, several men or women could do. Does that worry you? No, not really. Automation like this flatline finishing system is expected to trim production costs. This work used to be done by hand. Um, it's interesting, you might have to lose jobs to save jobs. Tell me about that. Well, we, we're, we, we've got to change processes. We can't, cannot continue to do the processes that have been around since the 1960s. We, we've got to totally revamp this plant. I'm, I'm very excited about what I see. I understand that the need to get new equipment and, and bring things up to speed and more current so that we can make a better product at, at a little less cost possibly. Customers now special order what they want, limiting inventory cost. And when the work is complete, items are precisely packaged by a computer operated machine and then quickly shipped to the consumer. The key point is us being able to begin to make money and to be able to continue to perpetuate this plant uh, down the road. And when will you know whether you're being successful at that money piece of that equation? Uh, it uh, uh, needs to happen soon. Calix Furniture in Burke County is targeting a niche market too. We have people contact us now weekly looking for someone to build upholstery for them. 
With five different lines, the upholstery company creates commercial custom furniture for hotels and healthcare businesses. Kellex recently also started making furniture for the home market. Down here, and you just have to make sure this is straight. And then if there's strings on it, like down here, and you just have to clip them off. Just make sure that they're hid, the smaller ones are hid. Um, you have to make sure there's no staples in the welding to make sure you get them all out. Charlie Rice launched the company in 2008 in the same plant where Hickory Hill used to operate. This area is still rich with a history of uh, craftspeople. There's a great supply network that we count on every day, which, which are also our business partners. And it is, a, it is a great resurgence and a rebirth of, a, of an industry that we all thought was gone. I get a little tearful. Why do you get tearful? It's sad for the economy to be so bad. Do you know a lot of people who are out of work? Yeah. I mean, people that I worked with before when I worked at Royal Hill, it's sad. Furniture was such a big part of the economy, and not only this area, but North Carolina. A lot of it did leave, but um, we still have about 15,000 furniture-related jobs in surrounding four counties. So uh, a lot left, but there's a lot that's still here. And, you know, it is surprising to see that we're adding furniture jobs, um, looking for employees. Measure every place that is put on seam to seam. Nice and straight and tight. Quickly making what consumers want, again only filling special orders to avoid holding on to costly inventory. Fast turnaround. Fast they order to turn them around and get them back to in quality. The advantage we have and we can never forget is we are still closest to our customer. It's an advantage Scandinavian company Equinus recognizes too. The company is opening its first U.S. assembly plant in Morganton, citing the need to speed up delivery to American consumers. The challenge now, according to Darnell, may be recruiting and continuing to train enough employees who want to work in furniture manufacturing. It's disturbing from an economic development perspective when we have 12.6 percent people unemployed but we have companies every day telling us we can't hire people. Here in Burke, you know, we want to be the world headquarters for furniture again. It's kind of a selfish plan for all of us, but I think it's going to take all of us to come together to, to eventually realize that. This may be the time for domestic makers to see some of the greatest opportunities in any career because there is a movement back to the U.S. production company. Making it one product at a time. The High Point Furniture Market is scheduled for late October. It remains the largest furnishing trade show in the world, allowing many North Carolina companies to show off new products. If you'd like more information on this story or any of the other stories profiled in our North Carolina Rising series, please go to our website at unctv.org slash ncrising. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNC-TV.